Hey everyone. Uh, I've said in the past that I don't like doing videos. That's still very true. But uh, I don't know. I kind of wanted to do this. Uh, we did the video with Tim on his art book, which you can find on YouTube, uh, the video interview. But I also had wanted to do something on Michael Marshall Smith. Uh, now, Michael's been on the show a couple of times talking about his books and his influences and stuff, and I find his stuff really compelling. This this was his first book, Only Forward. Uh, it's good. It's not amazing, but it's good um, under Michael Marshall Smith. But this was the one that really got me into them, which was The Straw Men. I, I can't recommend this enough if you like dark, uh, conspiracy-minded stuff with just a touch of the supernatural. Um there's the uh, the second book in that series, The Upright Man, which is also incredibly good, and Blood of Angels, which was the third. Uh, and they're very they're very thick novels there, but they're, you go through them real fast. The Upright Man actually uh, is named something else in um, I think the U.S. I think it's The Upright Man in the U.K. I picked it up on Amazon. So uh, The Lonely Dead is what it's called. Uh, the Upright Man is the name of a serial killer in his novel. Um, as far as Blood of Angels, I think that is the one that actually has Bigfoot in it. So you have this kind of conspiracy-minded, dark drama type of thing going on uh, with a serial killer, and then you have Bigfoot, and he manages to tie it all together beautifully in ways that I could not foresee when I started the novel. Um, but then there's the, the more recent ones here. The Anomaly, which uh, I talked to him at length about in the last interview, uh, because this was the one I had read most recently. It is uh, about the <clears throat> the supposed Egyptian cave in the Grand Canyon. Whether or not that really exists, who knows, but it was reported on in the Smithsonian back around the turn of the century. It's a great book, but this one, Possession, is the second in his Anomaly Files series, and my God, it blows that one away. It blows. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it blows away the the, <laughs> the straw men series because that's a different thing. Uh, but when you look at this, okay, it says the possession and has kind of the haunted house with the the figure in the window. And I thought, okay, so it's going to have something to do with possessions. One of the things we talked about on the show were the series of walls that run all over, well, all over the U.S. But um, that's what's, where it kind of starts with this. It starts with a missing girl, which seems to be how some of his novels start, because uh, you get a, a similar type of thing with a kidnapping and some of the straw men stuff. Um, but you get this girl who goes missing, and then you have them researching. The Anomaly Files is kind of a YouTube paranormal show, uh, documentary style, a reality-based style type of thing. And... Uh, so they're researching these walls in the same area this girl goes missing, and they start putting pieces together. This book is incredibly strange. It is awesome. Um, it's horror, but it's it's not like anything I've ever read before. Uh, it's the way he constructs stuff and the way he twists it. It's unlike anything I've seen before. Like this one, only forward has has to do with like the reality of dreams in a sense, but not in any way you've ever seen before. But this, I, I wanted to read a couple of quotes out of this because I don't think Michael actually listens to the show. I might be wrong, but um, there's stuff in here that is, uh, I mean, it's, it's what we're talking about in reality. And he has put it in his fiction in a similar way. <clears throat> um, so he says, uh, I'm, I'm going to read a portion of this. I, I'm trying not to give you any spoilers whatsoever. Uh, so one of the characters says, we heard a weird noise and thought somebody might be in there. And uh, you didn't hear the noise, Val said. You felt it. If someone had made an audio recording of the street at that moment, then played back the tape, the noise wouldn't have been on there. Same with the sound Christy heard a couple of days before. I saw a glow in there, though, I said. Same kind of thing. Wouldn't have shown up on a photograph. You just sensed something was in there. Um, and on our way here just now, we heard something similar in the mist. What Was that the same? Yes, it's not a sound or a sight. It's an experience. It's feeling something. 
and not having any way to process or name it. I'm pretty sure I've said those exact words at some point on this show, probably numerous points. You file it in your mind as best you can, though there's a theory, it's actually the big mat of neurological material in the midriff that does most of the processing, the stomach brain, the old preverbal mind, the sight of gut feelings and unease. Same with the phones last night. You heard them. It wasn't hearing. No phones actually rang. You may have been seeing odd things in the last couple of days, too, and feeling nauseous. I heard knocking inside his closet. Nolan heard it, too. Not real sounds, again, Val said. It just meant something was nearby. You know it's there, but you can't see anything. So your mind resolves the conflict by positioning the source somewhere hidden. That motel is right by the woods, which is where they live. You may have also experienced sudden temperature drops, though those are real. I mean, it's all real, but there are different reels happening at once. I mean, that is... Uh, so much a part of the type of stuff we talk about on the show. And near the end of the book, they, uh, um, it's just, it's, it's so dead on. So they're talking about, okay, I'm going to go back a page here. Uh, something that looked like a bird, but pretty definitely wasn't, came flying up into their faces, uh, hovered in space, not moving its wings, and then sped off again. It seemed to go right through the ceiling. I don't know why they weren't attacking. Maybe they never had been. Maybe we'd just been scared, and a feeling of being attacked is simply how you interpret the actions of things that scare you. Fear of the unknown. Again, I feel like we have, we have proposed this very thing for so much of this phenomena on this show for years. And here he is, Michael is putting it in this book, and I don't think he's gone back and listened to these shows and went, oh, that's a great idea. I think he's come to this on his own um, and just kind of fictionalized it. I can't remember, I can't recommend his stuff enough, but the possession in particular just touches on so much of the stuff we deal with and where did the road go in ways you just would never see coming. And uh, so I just wanted to do a little video. If people like this, I'll do future sort of book review type of things. Um, with other books that I actually have physical copies of. But for now, again, I highly recommend uh, Michael Rutger, which is what those are under, Michael Marshall, which are the what the Strawman series is under, and he has a few others under Michael Marshall Smith. Uh, he does have quite a lot of stuff out there, including a bunch of short stories. I have yet to read anything bad from him. But above all else, as much as I love the Strawman series, this, is a, this can be read as a standalone. You don't need to read The Anomaly first, even though it's the second. It makes a few vague references to The Anomaly, and I think The Anomaly makes some references to The Straw Men, but it's not anything that if you don't get it, it's going to impact the story. Um, if you're going to read both of them, I'd start with The Anomaly, just because I, I feel like this is the superior book and it's the second book. But if you're only going to read one, you want to see if you like his stuff, as a fan of Where Did the Road Go, this is the one you want to read. This one is just mind-blowing and uh yeah so check it out and uh that's it for now